the United States called Abraham Lopez. Abraham means Mexican, which is his heritage, as is mine, funnily enough. Um, Abraham has written a book called Going Gone, a very readable, lyrical, um, quite um, spiritual book that is more of an anthology than a novel. It's, uh, uh, that's to say it's about 12 um, short stories which have all been um, put together revolving around a, a central action uh, incident at the beginning and closing with another with a sort of explanation at the end. Um, and I'm going to now ask Abram to introduce himself, um, tell us a bit about his background, where he comes from with regard to writing the book, um, and how the writing process was. Abraham, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, so please give us an idea of where you're from, your background, and where the writing bug came from. Yeah, I uh, grew up in the southwest of the United States. I'm um, a son, son of immigrants, the, the one kid that was born here in, in America from, from Mexico. And um, so basically, I'd always you know, wanted to be a writer, and, and I, I think I kind of gravitated to short stories. I always liked um, you know, uh, Raymond Carver and uh, and just kind of the short stories that you know that I'd, I'd read as a kid, and so um, uh, I, I, I kind of you know always had it had a, a, a certain I, I'm I'm in the process of of writing longer works of fiction, but the the one um, uh, project that I kind of kind of always had my or had in mind for quite a while, quite a long time was this anthology, uh, th this idea that you you start with a story and it kind of has you know it, it has roots that, that just kind of you know spread out from there. And and you kind of see how that one central theme, you know, um, grows from from that. It to without giving too much away, the central theme is introduced early in the novel. The first paragraph reads accordingly: "In order to allow for new growth, the old must be felled, must often be felled, burned away to the ashes. This is as true of forests." as it is in the constructs of men. And as a single thunderous current can engulf an ancient forest in flame, a solitary strike of violence can erase the oldest of man's foundations. And in this case, in the book, the chapter goes on to describe the assassination of a Middle Eastern potentate. It's left slightly vague of which country and so on, but we can guess it's a, the equivalent of a, a Hussein or a Gaddafi. A, I presume that. something like that. Basically, I, I try to be, be a little bit vague with that. You know, something that, that a, a leader that had a, enough influence that it would have repercussions if he were to be assassinated. And I kind of modeled it a little bit after a, a modern day Franz Ferdinand. Sort of, you know, you, you, you have one, one leader killed and then there was a lot of repercussions from there. And I kind of said, OK, well, well, how would how would this affect, you know, a country as big as America and as influential, influential as America? And also, how does it affect individual people? That's that's what it, that's what the theme was. Right. And in this case, it, uh, the focus then moves from the Middle East to North America. And the, the anthology basically focuses on individuals in North America. Um, there's no unifying um, either theme or or. Um, feature about these people, it seems to me they're quite randomly selected other than this uh, assass the, the dominoes that start to fall after the assassination takes place. Is that correct? You, you yeah. Pick a cross section of humanity um, from I, I, I kind of try, try to go high and low. Yeah. Pardon me? Try to go high and low, you know, from, from like the, you know, real, real high up, you know, um, uh, um, people or people, people of influence. All the way down, you know, like to, to you know, a soldier kind of like caught in the middle to, you know, a journalist to, to I mean, to, to celebrities, you know, and basically, you know, kind of a cross section. And I, I kind of asked myself, if it was, you know, if it was this specific person or, you know, an example of, an example of whomever, how would they um, deal with this radical change, this radical shift in the world? And it certainly is a radical shift. Um... And it's certainly fascinating the way you pick out these characters. Um, I have a few favourites, I must say, uh, including uh, there are two celebrities featured that uh, you, you yeah. 
take the opportunity, if you like, to expose celebrity for what it is, and also, I think, to have a bit of fun at their expense. Yeah. Um, would you care to comment on celebrity as such and how you see it? Yeah, and and, and that's actually, I, I think, especially the, uh, the rock star, I kind of had a, a lot of fun with that because I kind of had to envision, you know, how would this um, walking ego essentially deal with, you know, a situation? And at first, it's kind of just, you know, a, a, another day, day in the life of, of a rock star. And little by little, it starts kind of falling apart. It's kind of one, one of those sorts of things. That uh, that I always kind of envisioned. How how would this this happen? You know, if something like this were to happen, how would a person like like him deal with this situation? And uh, but but kind of the overarching kind of theme with with that and the other celebrity celebrity that I that I talk about is the 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 um, importance that we you know nowadays place on celebrity for whatever reason, and and yet they're they're realistically pretty shallow because you know they're they're entertainers you know by and large and and first and foremost they're entertainers they're basically you know especially actors i, I think i would pick on is uh is they're adults who basically are paid to play make-believe but Correct. the thing is because they're so well known we for whatever reason put this uh this importance on them we put and, and also we 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 kind of transpose a wisdom on them for some reason as if they have as if they have some secret they, they know something more than we do when in reality, you know, celebrity is is just celebrity. It's just it's it's kind of a, a superficial thing, and why we put such importance on it, I I'm, I don't really understand. I mean, I can understand the the allure of it, but um, but they're not any more insightful than anyone else. And I think in a lot of ways, they're a lot less insightful because they're kind of in a bubble. Absolutely. And so I kind of try to oh, try to poke that bubble a little bit, you know. I couldn't agree more. I think the world had it best when it comes to celebrity about 100 years ago, where they were famous in their field, well rewarded, but uh, they stayed in their box. And, and if anything, they were looked down on um, and scorned by polite society because really that's, they were just paid actors and uh, one step up from you know, prostitutes, basically, insofar as they will do whatever they're told to do, so long as they get some fame and fortune out of it. Yeah, uh, you were beautifully exposed it in the second, um, the case of the second celebrity, of course, where he, there's a chance to, for him, uh, in a soliloquy in his mind, he, he he reveals all about celebrity and how it is just a, sh a shallow trash can full of uh, a cesspit, really. And um, yeah. it's beautifully done, and and it's a great scene that unfolds subsequently, where basically his world falls apart, and he's brought back to a very harsh. The, the harsh realities of the world with his bubble pops instantly almost and yeah. um and he, and that and that one specifically i had a very clear um uh sentence in mind as far as um there's nothing more useless in an apocalypse than a celebrity because you know you have welders there's going to be some use for welders you know you have soldiers there's going to be use you know there's going to be use for a lot of different people who have a lot of different trades in in an apocalypse, celebrities not. I mean, it's 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 the, the shallowest of the shallow. What good are they going to be, really? You know. And so back, so it comes back yeah, to the theme: renewal and dis destruction, and then renewal. Um, yeah. What we used to prize many years ago were the man, the man who could repair your horseshoe or or um, bring you some meat, and um, that has been lost uh, to celebrity and, and sportsmen and stuff who really play no significant role in the in a continuation of life on earth right and yet we accord them godlike status um so yes uh, there's some nice twists like that for the the reader um where the cycle is seen revealed if you like um in all its ugliness and in its glory as well um yeah I, yeah, I try to be as, as kind of realistic as possible while still, you know, making it entertaining. But, you know, that, that theme for sure was one that I, uh, th that I um, had in mind it's specifically for the celebrities about, you know, about, you know, what, what, what good are they or what, what role would they play really, you know, all of a sudden have a need for people of use. They're, you know, they're, they're, they're very superficial. At the other end, you have, and then one of the stories relates to a, a man who's dying. He's an ex, an ex CIA, I'm guessing, or Secret Service yeah. of some sort. Yeah. Um, 
and it's he that references the title in the book, Going Gone. I'm going to just read a little um, passage from that particular story. It, it, and it's, a, it's basically a dying CIA agent, as I say. And so here he sat, thinking back to a wisp of an idea that had been a malingerer to his thoughts for the last few weeks. The idea about when things had started to go to shit. Or had they gone to shit long ago? There was a chasm between going and gone, he decided. If it was still going, recovery from that state was at least possible. Once it was gone, though, it was over. He'd felt the world in general, and the country in particular, going down a reckless path for some time. He had, until recently, chalked it up to just growing older, and by, and by nature also growing more bitter. Now, bearing in mind that the title is Going Gone, um, would you like to elaborate on that and how you see... Uh, we've talked about the, the, the eternal cycles in life, but now that's suggesting, and I would tend to agree, that we're in the cusp of a new cycle, that the, the destruction part is, is coming. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 the, um, and with that, I, you know, I, I kind of try to make it, you know, put it in layers as far as you know, individual relationships, let's say, and, 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 and grand, a little bit grander you know, relationships, but then you go, get to like you know, a country or a society. Um, that, that relationship, as far as like, you know, when we get uh, far enough away from the principles by which a, uh, uh, a country was founded, and and you know you, you're going away from whatever you know like like you know let's you know use the example of the United states about you know the, the principles that they were founded on and we get kind of a little a little uh you know overconfident or we see ourselves a little as as if you know we're a superpower but we we believe that this, that our our status as a superpower is just a given we, we we should have that we don't have to do anything about it and realistically we should you know every generation should build upon the work that the previous generation did and try to make the you know world better and and you know reflect on what what, what previous generations did and and appreciate it instead we kind of fall into that trap of entitlement and we think oh the world is ours and it should be ours and so you get further and further away and that's where you're going and it's like at a certain a certain point excuse me there you, you get to a um uh, a point where it's just gone where, where, where too many people have taken um something for granted for too long and there's just no going back. And that's that was kind of that chasm that, that I that I saw him, you know, reflecting on as far as, you know, have, have we gone too far? We've we already gone over the edge or can we still course correct and get back on the road? And that's and what it was. The big question then is where do you see us in that sense of the world or, or the United States in particular? Are we going or are we gone? I, I you know, I always I, I as as pessimistic as the uh, the book might seem, I'm always kind of an, kind of an optimist. I think you know um, there there are enough good people, enough good good men and women that we can we can find our our way back. Um, but man, we're we're definitely a lot closer to gone than we were even a few years ago. And it just because it just seems like you know people who should know better, people who know that being divisive and dividing people more and more and more. Um, they should know that they shouldn't be, you know, they have the power. Let's, 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 you know, put, put the uh, emphasis on, let's say the press. Yeah. And they, you know, they, we, we, the press has a very special um, uh, position in, in, in America, you know, I'd say specifically because, you know, they have the freedom of the press. They're specifically written in the constitution and they're there to inform the, uh, the public. And when they use that instead to sell a narrative, um, then I they think they're being um, extremely irresponsible and they're actually being very destructive because they're driving a wedge between neighbors, between society, and and it just it, it just accelerates that goneness. It accelerates that you know that, that that erosion of the American principle. Yeah, it does seem like the all the powers that be are, are pre pressing the accelerator to drivers into off the edge of the cliff into the abyss at full speed uh, as far down as they can right um and it we are very dangerously close i think we all agree on that i do think there's a slight obligation on our behalf to, to remain optimistic whether or not we feel it in our bones because morale is important in any struggle and um we're certainly in a struggle to the death perhaps uh, long term um and writers uh, are part of the infrastructure of a, of a good morale or a bad one. We can sort of swing it whichever way we like. 
But uh, there is, there's another reason to be optimistic in my mind, is that it is cyc uh, cyclical, like you say. Um, yeah. To an extent, the destruction brings on the, the new growth, the destruction of the forest brings on the new growth. That's something I referenced in, in my novel. And um, whether we, if we do go off the edge, maybe that is the best thing and uh, start, cleans the slate and starts anew. But yeah. um, it is very and interesting. I do think also there will be, your book references America. I think America has shown the, the world over, it's, it's throughout its existence, it has this remarkable ability to, to swivel on a dime, so to speak, and, and turn itself around and, and create absolutely amazing um, results out of almost seems, seemingly nothing. Whereas the older world is much slower, it seems, more sclerotic. Um, do you see a division? Do you, do, do you pick America? I obviously, you live there, but uh, do, do you see that the hope comes from America particularly, or, or that's just I, I, I do because um, as much as, and I think it's kind of more of a coastal thing, and a specifically an urban thing and a coastal thing, where you know we, the, you you see you know that you know there's there's all this division and all there's you know and, and Americans you know kind of um, uh, kind of infighting and everything else, but I I mean I live in the South. And I remember when I when I moved here from the Southwest, you know, being being Hispanic and everything else. And I remember people, you know, that had never been to Arkansas or never been to, you know, other parts of parts of the, of the South. Um, they basically said, uh, hey, you know, watch out for the good old boys or watch out for people, you know, because they're racist and this and this and this and this. And I, I have to tell you, um, I just don't see that that big, you know, division. I don't see that 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 racism. I don't see. I mean, if if I've encountered. Um, it's been very, very, you know, few and far between, and and for the most part, people are very down to earth. They're, you know, salt, of the, you know, cause you call, it, call it salt of the earth. That, that's that's exactly what most people here are, and realistically, they they more than anything want to live their lives, and they allow you to live your lives. And so, so a lot of the times, the division that, that you see on TV and that you see, you know, being um, reported, I, you know, maybe I'm just in a, a very unique situation, but I just don't see it. Well, you are. And so, uh, I, I have hope there that uh, that there's a, a good majority of the of the uh, um, in infrastructure of America that just doesn't buy into it, and they actually are just very good people. Yes, I think. Well, I think you are in a sort of unique position. Your testimony is very valuable because we don't ever get to see in the mainstream media uh, an ethnic minority from the flyover states. I mean, you're the part of the deplorables and all that. Yeah. Um, speaking positively about the United States in any sense. It's all negative, negative, and, and how awful and you, you've been abused and stuff. I'm also Spanish and I am um, uh, Hispanic heritage, and I also uh, don't see any any issues. Um, and I think we need to make that more clear. It's interestingly, I've started drawing up the list of people I'm going to interview, and more Mexicans have appeared. After, after Americans, I think they're the most prominent um, nation represented on the shortlist. It's not big. Um, I haven't approached many of them yet, but uh, it does seem that there's a breakaway faction. How do you, do you have within your um, social sphere, uh, Hispanic wise, do you see um, other voices emerging that are going to be important in that sense for us? Um, you know, um, I, I'm not sure, I'm sure specifically like in, in the, the writer's sphere, but I think specifically in, in like, let's say the, the entrepreneurial sphere, you see a lot more um, people kind of going going that way as far as seeing the opportunity uh, specifically that, you know, that, that America offers and not really buying into the narrative of um, America is an overwhelmingly racist society and you don't have any, and, and unless you um, let the state take care of you, you're, you're not going to be, you know, you're not going to succeed or whatever else. And a lot of, I think there's a lot of people I think in, in specifically the, the uh, Hispanic community and increasingly in the African American community that just aren't buying that narrative. They're like, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I, I see opportunity everywhere, and it's it's kind of refreshing to see. You don't hear it in the mainstream um, narrative at all, but but it's it's definitely there. And I think I think you saw, um, especially with kind of even even the uh, the um, you know president presidential outcome, whatever it is right now, whatever they're still going through the you know the, the whole process, but just the uh, demographic breakdown of who voted how. I think you're seeing a, a pretty big shift there, and I think it uh, it um, wake people up to the fact that oh, this minority group isn't a monolith. 
people yeah. have different points of view. And yeah. I think more and more they're not buying into the, you know, the the the, the government's going to take care of you. Just keep on voting us in. And I think there's a lot of people that just aren't aren't buying that narrative anymore. No, the great irony, of course, is they're all fleeing countries where the government tried to take care of them, and uh, that's why they fled. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they... well, exa that's exactly it. I think specifically in in uh, in you know uh, Latin American and South American countries, they're like, no, we 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 left that country to get away from this kind of stuff. We didn't yeah. come to America to to redo it, you know, do that over over again. We we know that experiment doesn't work. Okay, um, now you have a, norm, a regular job, obviously. You intend to go into writing more full time. How was the writing? How did you schedule your writing? Uh, and how did you find the process? And how long ago did you start? I, uh, the book was published in 2018, but 2018, how long? Yeah. And, and actually, I had a, a little bit of a, of a, a break there. But I think I started it in like in 2015 or so, 2015, 2015 and and. I got the first few short stories written. Just I just had a break. I don't know what it is. I think it was just it wasn't really uh, writing uh, a writer's block or anything. I just kind of had a a doubt as far as you know what whether or not to be able to, to write the thing, and you know um, got busy doing it in 2017 and said, okay, I'm just gonna you know write every single day. I'm just gonna get down to it and just uh, and just was able to do it. And every, whenever I'd finish a, a short story, I sent it off to my sister to have her you know read it over. Um, and told her, don't, don't worry about proofreading it. I'm going to have to edit it and everything else, but just let me know what makes sense, what doesn't make sense, what you think about it. And then she'd give me feedback. And little by little, I called it together, got it done at the end of 2017, and then published it in 2018. Very good. And you didn't have problems writing as such here. You found, you, did your normal life lend itself to writing in your job, or, or are you just. Uh, yeah, I mean, it. it um, and uh, my my uh, wife actually works nights, so whenever she'd be working, I'd I'd use less when I would usually find find time to to write. It's like I might as well be be doing something, and I just you know write, and then you know so every once in a while I'd go back and edit, you know, um, or or just basically I had to connect all the pieces because everything's kind of you know everything is obviously um, uh, tied together. So I wanted to make sure that everything made sense. So I'd kind of you know kind of go back and forth every once in a while. But uh, but yeah, it 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 it. it um, some sometimes when it was busier at, at work than others, it was definitely a lot more difficult. Especially mm -hmm. uh, with, with programming, it uh, um, a drain on your your mental energy because you get done with you know an entire day of coding, and uh, and you're just like, man, I just don't even I don't I don't want to look at a word document right now. But uh, but you you put the time in, and, and it's nice to see you know some. And you've also written a book, uh, an ebook um, on how to write. Uh, I haven't looked at it, I admit, but I will link to it in the um, comments below. Uh, would you like to just explain what that, where that comes from and what that's a... And that, that's actually just a, um, a, um, a uh, result of the, the writing process, kind of said, okay, what, what, what did I go through? And actually the first uh, three or four segments is kind of the, 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 the why and the how, and actually the, I think the why is almost more important than the how of writing. Is is basically you you have this this passion project, and you you want to get it out, and the whole time you're, you're at least I, I think every, every uh, writer that I've that I've talked to is basically said that you know you have that self doubt, you don't know what good, you don't you know, and basically it's kind of talking specifically about getting over those doubts, and 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 knowing that okay if there's a if there if the book is important enough to you you will write it, so why not start now. And and that's really really what it comes down to. The military features quite strongly um, in the book, as does celebrity. And I kept thinking, well, he must have been in the military. And then I kept starting to think, well, no, he must have been working in the celebrity <laughs> industry. Um, <laughs> neither of those you've worked in, then. That's just research. Well, I, I in a junior ROTC program in high school, and I actually worked for the Department of Defense for a few years. Ah. And so, and, and, and my, uh, my my wife's family is actually all all military. So, you know, I kind of I've always had it around. And it was, and I, I thought, you know, definitely with a, uh, with subject like this, the military is going to have something to say. So sure. I, I, you know, I, I wove it in there wherever I thought it was, uh, it was. And you mentioned Raymond Carver was one of your inspirational influences. Um, other writers or other um, writers who you aspired to towards or that influenced you or just uh, in trying to think who uh, was the um, I, I always forget his, his, the the um, it's uh, 100 years of solitude. 
Um, Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Um, and then um, I'm trying to think who else would be. And then like Tolkien and, and you know, I'm, I've always re read uh, sci-fi and, and fantasy uh, for the most part, which is kind of funny. I, I read, wrote something pretty much, you know, in the real world. But uh, I think I, I think eventually I would like to write something in, in either the fantasy or the, or the science fiction genre. And I think, um, well, I got a little bit of science fiction, I guess, in there with the, with the AI, with the artificial intelligence uh, True. chapter. Yes. Uh, but it was, you know, as close to um, reality as I think, you know, I thought, you know, we could kind of get to with, with, a, with a story like this. Very good. Um, you said that one of the things in a correspondence with me, that one of the themes was the dangers of strict ideology. Um, and you also address religion in the in the novels and the stories um, in in a very sensitive and um, rather very pleasant sense, very readable. Um, it doesn't overwhelm the story at all. Um, would you care to address ideology and also its religious um, version, if you like? And, yeah. Um, I, I Oh, well, I, I mean, a lot of a lot of it with, with ideology is, is and it's kind of what we're seeing now, is, you know, with with political ideology, is when when people just you know see things very you know black and white. And I always I always kind of make the joke that you know as computers, you know that that you know think in binary or they, they basically compute in binary zeros and ones. The closer they get to thinking like humans, it seems like we're regressing, kind of starting to think like computers in zeros and ones. You know, you're, you're, you have people that, you know, they have an ideology of liberalism or even conservatism. And then, you know, they, they can't see any of the gray. They can't see anything in between, any, any of the answers in between. And so I just kind of kind of uh, uh, wanted to, to, to um, bring up the the, um, the the position that that being so rigid um, keeps you from being able to, you know, not only think, you know, beyond just that one line of thinking, but it also keeps you from. Being able to to experience you know the, the rest of humanity um, uh, any any better than and well it, it it's one of those sorts of things where we're seeing like I said especially today with 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 ideology you're seeing uh, people um, cordon that themselves off they they you know you have people that basically almost bragging don't want to associate with other parts of society because they think this way or because they voted this way. Sure. And so it, it's, I think it's a danger when we start um, baselining an ideology and, and letting it interfere with, with society in general. I mean, we, we can all have our political views, we can discuss them, but, but it shouldn't keep us from, um, from being able to be friends or being able to, be, to, to associate with each other. And I think that unfortunately, when you get really strict ideology, you start taking the humanity out of society, and so that's kind of what, what I was uh, warning warning against. And and it's uh, it's an idea that I kind of had with with that the artificial intelligence unit. I kind of wanted to um, with you, tell yeah. the story of of where where it is you know little by little becoming more human, and it starts seeing the the um, the the dishumaning or or the, the the taking out of humanity you know in the in the in the humans that it's seeing you know on Earth sort of thing. And that extends into the religious manifestation of ideology, does it? You're saying, uh, well, how does yeah. that relate? The well, I, I, think, I, think, I think religious ideology, you can kind of do the same thing, where um, you you have a um, uh, an ideology that 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 um, basically says that if you don't see things the way we see things. If you don't see God the way we see things, if you don't see religion the way we see things, then you're you're less than human, you know. And why not butcher you? Why not why not kill you off? And um and in instead of seeing, um, I can accept that you see God a different way that you that you accept a different God or many gods, but we can still see each other as humans and and be able to live you know live live next to each other as as neighbors. And so I think. Ideology is very religiously ideology, is, you know, strict ideology without any kind of um, um, leeway for letting someone, you know, live live their life um, um, and, and and allowing them to have a livelihood or letting letting them have a, a life. And I think you know, there's there's that that strict ideology as, as well. Who were you writing the book for? What target audience did you have in mind, or was there one? 
Um, was it your you own know, act? Um, yeah, it, it, at the beginning, I wasn't really sure. Um, it, you know, I didn't even really think about having a, a, an audience. I was just thinking, you know, it would be kind of cool if I just wrote these short stories, which I'm sure that there's plenty of uh, people that are would have warned me, said, no, 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 make sure there's an audience out there, and you know, and and then and then you know, write it towards that, or at least know that there's somebody's going to read it. But um, basically, any, anybody who is kind of that, that you know enjoys, you know, maybe like dystopian subject matter. But enjoys it with with something that you know that you can inject some reality and some humanity and some philosophy into it and some humor. I did laugh at a few places as well. Uh, you successfully well, achieved that. Yeah, it, I think that you know you have some. I always think about uh, certain movies where um, they can successfully uh, add a little bit of humor in it if it's a very very serious oh. uh, subject matter because nobody wants to go to into, into a movie. And 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 just be miserable the entire time. And unfortunately, I think that's kind of how a lot of like you know Hollywood. I, I call it misery porn. They they yeah. they just they they love just bang that gong of of you should be miserable. You should you should be unhappy. And 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 don't you dare crack a smile. And I, I kind of have to you know remind myself you know that that you know people are are reading this to maybe be informed, maybe think of something different, but they're also there to be entertained. And if you can laugh every once in a while, why not? You know, sort of thing. So. Hopefully, all that is coming to a bit of an end. I mean, I, I don't believe in the lockdowns and so on, but they have had their benefits uh, in from our pers my perspective, at least, insofar as they've completely shut down Hollywood and yeah. uh, a lot of careers. And maybe there's a chance after this for a bit of a, a rebirth in a different uh, direction, where because it, it has become unbearable. I don't, I can't watch television anymore, or half, half the films that come out, I would. Oh, I'd rather die than pay money to do it. Yeah. So, um, well, that's what we used to call popcorn movies. It's like you went there, have a little popcorn, have a laugh, uh, and, and you actually enjoy yourself. You yes. Know? And instead, you, sometimes you go in there and you, you're more miserable going out than you went in. And, yeah, yeah. and not only that, but you paid to do that. You basically paid Absolutely. to make yourself miserable. So. You pay a lot of money. And, uh, well, that, that we'll have to see where things go. But that's part of the reason for doing this channel is I think there's an opportunity for... Um, New, new growth, new new faces um, in industries which have become very tired and sclerotic. And yeah, um, I mean, you you look at you look at a lot of the you know the, the big publishers and what kind of books they're they're selling, and also the process that they're having them go through. You have authors that have actually taken their books back to be re-edited. If, if, if you've heard of uh, sensitivity readers, I, I'm sure. No, but basically they'll go in. Um, and they'll they'll basically say, and I, I know for a fact that there was a few of my characters who would have been flagged and basically said, "You're making this ethnic group look bad, or you're, giving, you're 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 putting putting a stereotype on them. You have to rewrite this character as either white or have them, you know, do something different." There, was, I forget what the author's name was. I think it was a, a female who had a uh, it was a fantasy book, and one of the races in her in her fantasy novel were dark skinned, and she had to rewrite the book. Because it was it was making it, it was putting that race under a, a negative light, and people thought they could they could interpret it as being you know African American or minority or whatever it is, and I kind of asked myself I was like well isn't that what what artistry and creativity is about is creating an entirely new world, and you allow the author to to write you know you're not you're not doing this by committee, so no. it's uh, it's definitely uh, refreshing. I've read quite a few uh, independent um, authors' novels. And it's very um, refreshing to see their take, their their um, their style, and also their their um, uh, how truthful they are to their voice. Oh, I quite agree. Um, I, you've hit the nail on the head as far as I'm concerned because I only had the idea for this channel a few weeks ago, and I've been now busy neck deep in reading books like yours and uh, uh, Sanity and Reality, the books I reviewed last week, and. You, the three things you mentioned, the truthful, the, the refreshing, the style, and there's none of the cookie-cutter blooming rubbish that 99% um, of all, if you buy a thriller these days, it, it, they're almost all alike to the yeah. action scenes, to the way the person looks and talks, and there's nothing new, novel, thrilling about it. It's, 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 you're, it's like eating chewing, someone else's chewing gum, basically. Yeah, um, it, it's just rehashing I, the same thing over and over again, and it's like you you, you want to see something. 
different. And yeah. the thing is, even if if it's not something you're used to, well, that's that's a new experience, isn't it? You know, Absolutely. it's like it's like going going to a restaurant and maybe you didn't you know like it completely, but it was something new. Absolutely. And who knows, you might find some dish that that is your favorite all of a sudden, and you never would have never would have to combine those ingredients. But once you had it, you're like, oh my goodness, this is the best meal in the world. That's that's what a lot of these independent authors are are, are like. You you get you got an entirely different experience because they they haven't been through that machine, and it, that's and, what it feels like a lot of. Times. Yeah, and the sensitivity reader isn't there, and the editor that's worried about his pension isn't there, and and uh, it's much more direct and truthful. And I've got to say, the writing styles and the the, the presentation of the, the the ideas is is very direct and and. Um, I've thoroughly enjoyed the experience so far, and I presume it will continue that way. You've mentioned um, you want to go into full-time writing at some point. Have you got any plans for the the next book, or can you tell us anything about future plans? Yeah, I'm actually writing one right now. the uh, The title's uh, "Mousetrap Murders." It's 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 going to be like a murder mystery, right? And it's uh, it's it's you know specifically, I think it's it's going to end up being specifically about a lot of the uh, um, kind of little, little bit about or not not a little bit but about um, political ideology you'll you'll see it in there and uh, but but it's it's political ideologies um, framed as a um, crime you know thriller mystery sort of thing and so uh, so it's it's uh, I'm pretty excited about it I'm, I'm about a little over halfway done um, with writing the first draft and I'm I'm hoping to have it out. Um, I was I was actually hoping to have it out earlier this year, but probably closer to, to early early next year. And then we'll we'll uh, we'll see how that goes. But it's it's kind of my uh, my take. I I uh, remember um, Science of the Lambs when yeah. I was in high school, and uh, and the whole the hunt for a serial killer, and that's kind of what it comes down to. And it's but it's sort of a uh, um, the hunt for a serial killer that you didn't even know was out there. It's you you, you know it, you kind of discovered it almost by accident. And then you you realize, oh, this guy, this person didn't just you know kill one person. He may, have killed, but you don't, you know, you basically as, as you go through the uh, the the investigation, you kind of you know figure more and more out. And then when you figure out what his motive was, that's the, that's you know kind of one of the big revelations. So that's that's what I'm working on right now. And is that set in the USA as well? Uh, and is it yeah, present day or a, a, a present day? And I, I may actually have to. Uh, uh, it was actually supposed to be set in 2020. I may have to um, add yeah. some uh, some space to to some of the scenes because I uh, you know I kind of want it to be as realistic as possible. So you have to inject a little bit of the, the COVID information in there. It's going to make uh, writing characters' faces a lot easier in the future. You just yeah. put well, he had a, ma- a blue mask on or a blue gray mask, mask on. on. This guy had a black mask on. Yeah, <laughs> and that's it. You've you've yeah. done your job. I, I meant to. Uh, I was half expecting you to say that the next book might be a sequel because. Um, Although some of the characters don't make it, uh, some of them do, and I could easily—it would be fascinating. You, you, you've got us on the hook. The reader is on the hook by the end of the book, um, wondering what what happens next. I wanted to also say there's a, tar- a Tarantino quality to some of the um, stories and the way the characters are faced with uh, you know, sudden change of status or whatever it is. Was that conscious? Did you? reference him in your brain at all when you were writing a, a little bit i mean I, I i mean i love you know pulp fiction obviously and uh um and glorious bastards and 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 um and and kind of his the way you know his all all the the the, the segments of his movies are kind of all interrelate uh, one of the things that i tried to um specifically was the um i think i referenced a, a lyric from the, the the from the rock and roll band uh, um in i think the third um uh story right. And yeah. then, and then there's actually the, the the rock and roll band, and he, he lists some of his uh, some of his songs, and then later on, um, I think somebody somebody else references it as well, uh, or or one one of the the songs, whatever else. So, so basically that that through line, and then there's also you know the the whole qu- question of what is the tangerine demon, and so you know you kind of it, it it gets sprinkled in here and there, and then you get a little bit of a payoff at the end, and so so I, it it definitely was. A, um, uh, I mean, he's he's the master of it. He he basically goes yeah. through. I mean, they they've kind of done whole dissertations as far as um, what movies are set in real 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 life and what movies are kind of movies that exist in whatever worlds. I think there's certain. I think there's like a cigarette brand or something that that is con- consistent throughout his movies. And um, and so basically, I try to sprinkle those little Easter eggs 
you know, little by little um, okay. and, uh, and kind of see, you know, who, who caught what. And uh, and that's what I'd always ask people is like, well, what did you think about you know this specific scene or this story? And and I always ask people also, what, what was your favorite story or wh- wh- which one kind of like uh, uh, really really uh, uh, got you to, to notice something? So well, it definitely works, definitely echoes with a bit of Tarantino. Hopefully one day um, the great man might stumble across you for his writing team or or, or even the book itself. It, it uh, would work very well. Um, I'm going to, coming to a close, I think, um, I'm going to finish off with another quote, which is from the last chapter, and it kind of ties up uh, a lot of the themes and imagery that's gone on before. And I think it sums up very well the red-pilled perspective, um, in again, very lyrical style. Uh, Basically, because of this, I'll explain to the reader, uh, the viewer, that the assassination in the Middle East some time ago leads to massive repercussions, especially well around the world, but the ones we focus on in the book are, are the United States. And um, things spiral very much out of control, so that before long, really, the slate has been wiped clean across much of the world. And then this, very close to the end of the book, this passage comes. And so, in a span of, say, 30 days, things that had seemed so important previously became trivial, barely ever thought of again. Tweets and retweets, Facebook posts of graduations and vacations, and brunch with the girls, Instagram photos of food, food for fuck's sake, and pets, electronic dance music, YouTube videos of cats and funny impressions of actors that would have would soon be forgotten to history. Cartoons that referenced pop culture for no apparent reason. Last year's Cy Young winners, ERA. I don't even know what that is, but it sounds good. Brand new jeans that were manufactured to look like they'd been worked in. And the hot new celeb whose sex tape had somehow, in inverted commas, been leaked to the internet. Yes, um, hit a lot of nails on the head uh, with that and with the rest of the book. Yeah, and it, it that's that was basically my my recap of, um, and it's it's kind of like celebrity, really, when you think about it. It's like all these things that we put so much emphasis on with social media. I have to get a, the perfect picture of of what I'm eating. I have to get a perfect picture of you know of my pet. I got to get a per- perfect picture of this, or I got to have these genes. You know, it's, it's consumerism. It's the the ego trip that we're all on in 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 social media. It's it's all these things, and the 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 ERA that's that's a sports thing where people where people are so consumed with you know either fantasy football or fantasy whatever it is, we're consumed with the all these things that, um, the, the, yeah, they can they can consume your life if you really want them to, but but we're, what we're not talking about is family and raising yeah. kids and raising strong you know strong families and, and and raising strong relationships with other people, and so all of a sudden let let's say something you know really catastrophic happens. What do those things mean? They mean very, very little. And all of a sudden, we're we're kind of in in a, a fight for our lives again. And well, that, we fight for our lives. That reminds me of a lovely passage, out. actually, when the second celebrity is suddenly faced with, uh, you know, basically an uh, Armageddon on his doorstep. And for all his awards that he's got, his mansion and his staff and his cars, his, his, his only car to drive through the apocalypse is a, a Lamborghini, his choices between a Lamborghini and a McLaren. Exactly. And he just realizes how utterly useless they are, despite the fact they're worth a quarter of a million between them. And then he says, really, all I have left, I can't remember the exact vote, but it's brilliant, um, is my guns. And yeah. Although he's a liberal, it's exposed that his uh, liberal tendencies don't go as so far as and, they and should. I, I, uh, um, uh, um, you know, expose the, the 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 end of that. But there's a um, a very um, the the way things work out. Um, his trophies and his gun are are kind of you know, and it's basically um, the his hypocrisy and his and his uh, ego are the things that bring him down. I'll just put That's it that. Right. Way, you know, and uh, it's, it's one of those sorts of things where yeah, exactly. That's exactly it. He. He rallies against gun nuts. He rallies against you know you know all the all these things, but what is he really underneath? And that's that's where the hypocrisy comes out. That's right, and it's very well done. All right, Abraham. Abraham. 
we'll leave it there. That's um, terrific. When you write the next one, we look forward to reading it and uh, doing another interview at some point. All right, I appreciate it. Uh, all right, all the best. Thank you, Richard. Cheers.